Enzo, Brian Foley will end Enzo, gets it off to Alex, gets the first down and four, 40, 30, out. Oh, and that is a touchdown! Touchdown, Legend Titan! Titan! Going to the field. Oh, the ball's going to be intercepted. That's my man. Oh, hit the wrong button. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight for another Legend Titans football. And here come the Trojans running out in their military honorary night. Got approximately 11 minutes until game time. And here come your Titans running out on the far side of the field. Beautiful white jerseys this fine, beautiful evening. This is a Thursday night, not a Friday night. You know what they say, the next best thing to Friday night lights is Thursday night lights. Yes, sir. It's a little disturbing that their fight song is the same as Notre Dame. <laughs> and we're here with myself, Ryder. We got myself, JD, New and Schwander. And Coach New here tonight calling the game. Beautiful night for football. Now for national anthem. <laughs> Nice job singing there by the uh, choir from Fountain Fort Carson. I was actually from the middle school, I believe. Yeah, them oh, too. But they're still <laughs> from here, I guess. So what you'd Sounded say. like maybe a little higher pitch there. Sure. You come down here to uh, Fountain Fort Carson right by the Army base, you definitely feel a little patriotic, a little different than other schools. They also had the... Uh, Crazy pregame going on outside the stadium. It was the, the most I've seen out of any game I've been to. They got food trucks, lots of military members around. Um, it was quite the scene to see before a high school football game. For sure, and as we get ready for the coin toss, it appears the Trojans are led by number five, Mateus Price, senior running back. Number seven, Keenan Campbell, senior wide receiver. Number four, Jackie Jordan, senior defensive back. And number 45, senior fullback. And your Legend Titans are led by number five, Nate Sandy. Number 76, Logan White. Number 22, Alex Martinez. And number 19, Brian Doyle. It's been an interesting coin toss tonight. The wind is blowing straight from the south to the north. Might, might definitely impact the direction you want to go to start the game. Do you start with the wind or do you start against the wind and hope that? 
I think you start. Uh, that's a great question. There's different theories on this. I've coached before in programs where you try to check the weather right before you walk out and see what's going to happen, and you might know whether the wind's going to die down or not, and it might help you make a decision. I think this wind is kind of here to stay, at least for the first half. I would say I would probably take the wind at my back to start if I had the choice. And as we we're on the field for the pregame, Fountain Fort Carson was talking a a lot of smack led by number 11, Tremaine Shaw, the junior defensive back. So it'll be interesting to see how Legend handles the smack talk as we played them before. And we know it's a physical game, mentally and physically. Yeah, I've coached down here numerous times and the Fountain kids definitely know how to chatter. They uh, always tough kids, a lot of army kids. Worldly have traveled many places in our country many of them have been overseas with their family members being in the the military so um, they're definitely never never a easy game they always bring it down here yeah this team is definitely full of uh, some big boys this year um, I think size will be the big factor in this game seeing if they can come out and, and do anything against the Titans um, I don't believe this year Fort Carson has the same team they have had um, for many years but I also will say that this team definitely could come out and be a little hammer. So, when well, both teams are coming into the matchup at five and one, with Fountain Fort Carson's loss coming to Pine Creek and Legends' loss coming on an upset to Castleview. So, we will see as they've played the same teams. Fountain Fort Carson beat Pomona twenty-eight to eighteen, and Legend beat Pomona forty-nine to zero. So, some similar opponents here, and it'll be interesting to see how they match up. Yeah, I would say first quarter, first half is going to be the real factor of this game. If Titans come out strong and pull a, a quick lead ahead, I don't see this game going any other way than going in favor of the Titans. So we'll, de we'll definitely have to see how this first half goes. And the Titans in the past few games have gotten off to really odd starts with touchdowns on the opening drives against Schaap and an interception on the first play against Ponderosa. Given that both those games were in front of their home crowd, it'll also be interesting to see how they stand up with relatively no crowd that is very true uh, this evening we have a humongous band but little to no student section anywhere in sight so that's that might be one of the biggest bands we've seen all year it's gonna be festive yeah and this is the first game that we haven't had much of a crowd but Thursday night game testing tomorrow kind of kind of a mood killer right there for sure, we just gotta hope our Titans can get the win going into a big game against number two ranked Pine Creek, second to only Cherry Creek. Yeah, I think that a win tonight is crucial, especially for the momentum coming into that big game, because we'll have Regis, Pine Creek, those will be back-to-back -back games. Those are gonna be some really tough ones to kind of test the Titans. So I think a win right here will have some great momentum coming into those next few weeks. For sure, Michael Marcinich is folded under pressure a bit this year to uh, teams like Castleview after taking a few big hits, but had two uh, ego boost games, if you'd like to call it, against Chaparral and Ponderosa, where he threw for four touchdowns in both. So it'll be real interesting to see how he comes out against what appears to be a very physical Fountain Fort Carson team. I agree. I mean, the gentlemen have now uh, taken back the Pride of Parker Trophy. I think that's something to be extremely proud of, and I think that's also just gives them a reason to continue to fight and just uh, play together as a team. So I'm definitely excited to see what happens this evening. So we're going to be kicking off, and sure enough, we're going to have the wind at our back, so hopefully that helps. Fountain lost their starting quarterback, we believe, last week. Uh, so starting a youngster, it'll be a tough go trying to have him throw into the wind right now this first quarter, so I kind of like that decision. Yeah, and viewing him before the game, yeah, he's a, he's a young quarterback, I believe number 14. Sophomore. He, sophomore, yeah. Hey, throws the ball in quite a quite a strange way so we'll have to see if uh if he can get the ball out tonight or if there's gonna be a, a mainly running game especially with this wind we'll have to see what happens and as carson flowers steps up to boot the ball off fountain fort carson with zachary sanders number 23 and number 32 terrence morris back to return They've lined up in a pretty good way to take away our little pooch kick, but this one with the wind at our back, I think he can make the end zone if he lets this one rip. And as we said tonight, it is Fountain Fort Carson's military appreciation night. 
So lots of military families and personnel here in attendance in uniform. And we thank all of them for their service and commitment to our country. Here we go, Carson Flowers to kick the ball off. And Carson with a boot. Good boot right there. Yep, no problem puts reaching it, the end zone there with the wind. Puts it deep, Zachary Sanders not wanting to take that one out. Here comes the Titans defense. And starting at defensive line, we have number eight, Billy McGuckin, number seven, Jamar Yancey, and number 56, Anthony Saez. And linebackers for today's game is number five, Nate Sandy, number 32, Eli, Eli Frakes Belair, number 11, Champ Jones, and number 26, Lucas Bettendorf. And the defensive backs, number 10, Caleb Bullyhorn, number four, Brody Schuss, number 25, Garen Edwards, and number one, Peyton Auckland. It's a strong little group of defense right there. Um, I played with some of these guys, and I just, I love the intensity they come out with. Let's see how they start this game off. Justin Meissner, the sophomore quarterback, taking the snap. Simeon Gibbs on the line, steps back to throw. Keenan Campbell, the intended target, but overthrown. Coverage from Caleb Lillyhorn. It's an interesting play call right out of the gate. First play, wind strong in your face. Young quarterback starting a big game, and they go deep. Interesting. Great coverage there from Caleb. Um, I love that hip-to-hip, -hip staying in front of that receiver. Um, I think if he had seen where the ball was, it could have been a potential pick, but I, I love that coverage right there. Justin Meissner in the backfield. Matthias Price, the lone running back with two wide receivers to the bottom. Takes the handoff, hands it off. Price met at the line and gains maybe a half of a yard. It's a great job on the stop right there. Number five is a tough back. He runs the ball hard. Averages about 147 yards a game. He's a six foot three, 220 pound running back, which is a linebacker build. So it'll be interesting to see how our line and linebackers bring him down. Justin Meissner is going to be in the backfield. Met with Jackson Hayden Burke and number five, Matthias Price. Again, two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Meissner takes the snap. Once deep, can't find deep. Oh, picked off. Accepted. Nate Sandy, Sandy with a nice picked pick off right at the 31 yard line. Sets us up great for a great first drive here from the 30. So I think, yeah, looking, looking back on that play, that quarterback, he's a small kid. He looks super uncomfortable there in the pocket, and unfortunately, he just throws an unfortunate pass. Very little pressure. He had all day to throw it, but Titans dropped eight into coverage, and there wasn't many places to throw. And nice play by Nate Sandy. And Michael Marcinich starts at quarterback today. Alex and Jaden are going to be the running backs. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off. Martinez left, makes a cut for a gain of about five. And the O-line today is Jack Dame, number 64, number 76, Logan White, number 54, Juju Castro, number 77, Cruz Garcia, number 66, Jack Morgan. And the receivers, number 29, Riken Banks, number three, Jeff Baca, number 19, Brian Doyle, and at tight end, number 87, Noah Archuleta. Marcinich. Alex Martinez to his right. Martinez is going to roll out. Marcinich over the middle to Archuleta. Caught at the 17-yard line. That's going to be enough for a... Th and it looks like Archuleta fumbled the ball. Recovered by number six, Miles McClarity, the senior defensive back. Not sure how I feel about that play. Um, looking back on it, I cannot tell if Noah was down or not. Um, and the refs are going to conjoin at the 18-yard line to talk about this. Giving the ball to Fountain. And it's going to be Fountain for Carson Ball. We've got the Titans defense coming back out. Quick, easy stop for the start. So let's see one more. Get the offense back out on the field. Two turnovers in the first two minutes of the game. One from each team. Maybe a little nerves. We'll see what happens. Justin Meissner ready to take the snap with Matthias Price behind him. Two wide receiver set. The Trojans don't like the play call. Yeah, 
Meissner takes the snap, hands it off, fumbles oh, the loose. ball, fumbles the ball, met in the backfield by number four, Brody Schuss, taken down at the five yard line. Oh, that's, that's a questionable spot right there if you ask me. They had driven him back quite a ways, they gave him the ball on the 10 yard line, but still, lucky play for the Titans. So if they can put some pressure on now. Second and long. Two wide receivers set to the top. One wide receiver set to the bottom. Meissner takes the snap, hands the ball off. Price this time holds on to the ball, but is met almost immediately at the 11-yard line. It's a great job by the linebackers reading their keys. Fountain likes to run uh, up back. There is a fullback. It's called a, a sniffer. Sniffer is usually a great key. 90% of the time, they're going to go right where the ball is going to go. And watching the film throughout the week, 87 is their go-to blocker and pass catcher. So look for him to receive the ball a few times tonight. Two wide receivers set to each side. Meisner's, Meissner takes the snap, hands the ball off. Price is going to get right back to where they started. Fourth down and 10 as the special teams units come out for both teams. It's going to be an interesting punt here into this wind. Let's see where how much you can get a hold of this. The key is here for the returners is not to go back too deep and let the ball bounce. Bouncing balls on a punt, you average a loss of about 18 yards. Cade Smith, not such a good punt. Yeah, the ball's gonna die in the air. And that's... Auckland picks the ball up at the 44, makes a few men miss, and is ultimately brought down at the 47 yard line. I don't mind that play from Peyton. Uh, let the ball go, it's gonna roll, lose some yards. So, good on him for picking that up and trying to make something out of it. Here we go with the Titans yeah. offense. If you can get a perfect bounce like that, you can grab it, but it's always risky. Yep. You saw how we were gonna lose yards there when we let it bounce. Tough to catch punts though in the wind like this. Right, we had a, some good things going on offense the first two plays, let's see if we can continue that. Marcinich under center, Alex Martinez and Riken Banks, the running backs in the backfield. Riken Banks gets the carry is met almost immediately and dragged back to the 40 yard line. Three wide receiver bunch to the bottom of the screen here. Marcinich with Alex Martinez to his left. Takes the snap, Martinez the running back. Takes three men to bring him down. It's gonna be third down and 11 from the 48. Both defenses right now coming out with a lot of fire. Both are playing really well. Um, not seeing anything too crazy from either offense. We'd love to see the Titans kinda get a little spark in him. So we'll see what happens here on this third down play. See if we can get a, pick up a first down. Marcinich takes the snap, looking Jeff Baca's way, and is met in the backfield. That's number 92, Trevor Coleman, picking up the first sack of the game for the Trojans. That kid has a motor. They only sent three there. That was just a three-man rush, and they, they got to Michael. He's a big dog that just uh, was not giving up there, so good on him for that play. We go with Titans punt team out. Let's see if we can get a nice little punt off with this wind to our backs. And the returners for Fort Carson, Leland Thompson and Zachary Sanders. Good and the punt, punt in the air. Good punt towards Sanders' side. Sanders is going to let the ball bounce. Nice little And they're going to let it roll. Right there. Picked up at the 18-yard line where it's going to be first down Trojans. 6.20 left in the first quarter. So far, defensive struggle. Both defenses look like they came to play tonight. <laughs> My 
Eisner is going to jog on out with Price lining up in the backfield to the right of him. Same motion here, motioning the fullback to the bunch of wide receivers. Meissner takes the snap. Price hands the ball off. Saez meets him in the backfield. And then he is met by seven Titan defenders. It was a nice play by Anthony. It was a great get off he got there. Got in the backfield. Very disruptive. Caused, caused the back to go lateral. And everybody else could rally up behind it. Nice play. And their star wide receiver, number seven, Keenan Campbell, has uh, been on lockdown from Caleb Lillyhorn so far. So it'll be interesting to see if they test him their way or they continue with Price. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that offense. Again, we have this young quarterback throwing into the wind, so I understand a lot of these passing play or running boots. plays. Meissner rolls out brought down. and met by number seven. Who other That's Jamar. than Jamar Yancey? That's a nice play. That's that's a boot play right there. That's always a tough play to defend. And if you can have that end stay home and recognize it, peel off like Jamar just did right there. That's exactly how you want that to be with the D end. Nice job. We've got third and very long into the wind. Let's see if we send any pressure here, if we drop eight into coverage again. And it appears that the band is not only playing the music, but also their student section in the starting the chants. <laughs> Maybe they're their own crazies. <laughs> they they Meissner takes the snap, hands the ball off to Price on third and 20, but is met immediately as Nate Sandy making the tackle in the backfield. That's going to bring up a fourth down and 20 in which the Trojans are going to punt the ball. Well, here we are again with another punt into the wind. Hopefully we come out of this with some good field position. We had really good field position before, but now we need to do something with it. I think Fountain's missing a player. Got to call a timeout. And they only had 10 men on the field. And Peyton Auckland last week against Shap had four returns for 110 yards in one touchdown return. So you got to get all 11 out there for Peyton Auckland. These are the kind that are tougher to return when you're when the team's kicking into the wind because the ball tends to hang a little longer. But the key is just catching the ball, even if you fair catch it, don't let it bounce and roll. Four minutes left to play in this first quarter, which is still scoreless as both defenses clearly came to play today. Well, it appears the Titans are going for the block as they only have one returner back. Thielen not happy. And Nate Sandy gets oh. a hand up and almost blocks it. That's, that's actually a great punt from that kid right there. Great punt. And it's going to be touched and then roll out of bounds at the 46-yard line. And we'll see if the Titans can get their offense going. Yeah, punting from the ball in the nine, getting it all the way out here to midfield is, especially into the wind, that's a uh, great effort there from the punter uh, from Fountain Fort Carson. The only other game this year that the Titans have had to face adversity on offense is the Castleview game. So we'll see what changes they have made with facing a tough defense. Marcinich takes the snap, rolls out. Alex Martinez blocking, and Marcinich met, but gets the throw off to Archuleta. Play. Archuleta makes a few men miss and gains 15 yards enough for a Titans first down. That was actually well set up. Little roll out there by Michael and then takes a hit, but he drew the fountain guy in and then he could dump it off there to Noah. Nice and little play design. Michael had to pay the price, but. Yeah, again, Michael is a young quarterback as well. Making that play is just something you look for in a leader, so great play there from Michael. It's great first down. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off. Jaden. Nice cut by Jaden right there for about eight.
getting a little bit of push off the O-line right now. I'm sure they went over there and watched some film on the sidelines. Probably got a little bit chewed on there by Coach Brookhart. Their last effort was not stellar, so this time they're looking a little better. Got them dialed in now, hopefully. And Brian Doyle lined up with Tremaine Shaw on the bottom of your screen. Jaden gets the handoff, and it takes three men to bring him down. Looks like he's just shy of the first down. We'll see if they give it to us, they do. Uh, I'll tell you nope. what, we just got the uh, got the Colorado Springs spot right there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> You've coached as long as I have, you kind of know that the referees will favor these teams from down here. I think he's closer to the first down than that. But And the Trojans line looking a little jumpy. Juju doesn't snap the ball. Marcinich with a running back to each side. Takes the snap. Jaden, the running back that gets the ball. Up the middle. Takes two to bring him down. And that's enough for a Titans first down. Nice, nice run right there up the middle. And the Titans seem to be putting a, a drive together here as they started at the 47, and they're up almost inside the red zone. I agree. I think, like we said, the line definitely got uh, some sense chewed into them, and now they're doing their job. Marcinich takes the snap. Alex, the running back, hit hard at the 20-yard line. Just as the Trojans hold off with Lilyhorn in coverage, the Titans don't seem to be testing Tremaine Shaw to the left side, paired up with Brian Doyle yet. We'll see if they test it here. Alex Martinez, the fullback. Jaden in the backfield. Marcinich takes the snap. Jaden gets the ball. And a great tackle, courtesy of number three, Alexander Rivera. That's one thing we could definitely give props to on this Fountain Fort Carson team. The way these boys have been tackling tonight has been beautiful. Big gain tackles, big hits. They know how to make tackles. Honestly, it goes for both defenses. We've seen lots of good tackling from each of these defenses this evening. And that's going to bring up a third and five. The ball on the 18-yard line with a minute and 15 seconds left in quarter one. Marcinich fakes the handoff to Alex. In number 92, Trevor Coleman with a sack and a pass deflection there which brings up a fourth and five. And the Titans are known to go for it in situations like this. They don't kick field goals, but looks like the offense and Marcinich is going to stay out there. Yeah, J.D. Brookhart does not have field goal in his vocabulary, so we'll <laughs> see if the Titans can pull off a first down real quick or a touchdown. Yeah, kind of a surprise with the wind in we'll our back. We'll see the Trojan fans starting to make some noise. Marcinich takes the snap. Does not hand the ball off. Jay Norton is blocked over the middle. Nice Baca caught at the six-yard line. Great play there from Jeff. That was an excellent route that Baca just ran right there. It was a nice throw by Michael. First and goal. And Nick Farley out at tight end. As Archuleta heads to the sideline with Doyle continuing to stay matched up with Tremaine Shaw. Actually, we have Archuleta still out there. We got double oh, tights right oh. now. Let's see if we run one here or run some sort of a boot with the double tights. Marcinich and Juju pointing out maybe a possible blitz. Handing the ball off to Alex. Alex up the middle. There you go. And he's That's into the end zone. Bada bing, bada right boom, there. touchdown Titans. Beautiful play from Alex. Absolutely trucked that Fountain Fort Carson kid. Let's check the replay on that. That was a great Beautiful push. Cut. Great Boom. push from the right side of the line right there. Way to come off the ball. And as usual, Coach Brookhart knows what he's doing. <laughs> he does, he does. And Brady Ryan, or as his friends call him, TK, coming out for the extra point. The snap is through. The kick is up. And the kick is good with a little bit of push from the wind. All right, that was a good drive. Glad we finished that one off. So we've got 35 seconds left in the first quarter, and then we're going to be flipping sides. I'm kind of uh, interested to see how the Titans respond to this wind. I don't know if it's just me. It feels like the wind is giving way a little bit. It feels like it's slowing just a bit. So we'll see if the Titans can uh, fight through some adversity with this wind tonight. 
It's a Colorado thing. When the sun goes down behind the mountains, the wind starts to slow down. That's why I kind of like taking the wind at your back the first quarter. And the Titans, not to jinx it, but the Titans have won every single game this year in which they have scored first. So it'll be interesting to see if the Trojan offense can get it going like the Titans offense did or if the Titans defense continues to hold them to a standstill. Flowers with the kick, the hand in the air, the little jog in the boot. And this kick's going to be a little bit shorter, fielded by number 23, Zakari Sanders. Sanders going all the way from right to left, makes a man miss, and brought down at the 23. Pretty good coverage right there. And now, Mr. Neuenschwander, if I'm not wrong, if they fair catch any point behind the 20 yard line, it's an automatic 25 yard line spot, correct? Correct. Yeah. And that would have been one to do it because he kicked that one really high in the air and got some air underneath it. And it hung there for a while. Um, but still, return out to about 23. Yeah, in high school, we don't see as many fair catches because the kids feel all the pressure on them and kind of freak out when the ball is coming to them. So it makes sense to me why most of the time they're going to catch that and return it. But he, he did his job right there. And only two wide receivers on the field here for the Trojans. And it looks like they're going to be in Wildcat. Number five taking the snap. And that's Price. He does it all. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see a little bit more of that as uh, number 14 was just not really getting the job done with any of the passing plays. Well, and Justin Meissner, I mean, we saw on the field pregame, he was making a few good throws, but for every good throw he had, he had one throw that was off as well. So we'll see if they stick with Matthias Price in the backfield as the Titans only have three defensive backs on the field. That's, That's going to bring the first us quarter right the there. first quarter. All right, it looks like number 14 is going to be brought back out onto the field as they'll have the win to their backs, so we'll see if he can get the ball in the air or anything like that. Now I do got to give props. This Trojan Stadium is very nice as well as their band is extremely energetic, and they have not stopped making noise or cheering this entire game so far. No, this, this band definitely makes up for any uh, loss of student section. They're loud, they get the job done, and this is just great vibes coming from this band section here. Well, and throughout the week, as we talked to a few of the coaches um, and researching Found Fort Carson, they have a tough time maintaining fans, granted that a lot of their students and families that root them on are military personnel who continue to travel the world and the nation, in which it's very hard to gain community and school spirit when you're constantly traveling. So. It's great to see, though. I mean, the stadium is almost full here on the Trojan side, so it's good to see some spirit for a big game. And it looks like Price is going to stay in the Wildcat. Takes the snap, fakes the pass, and he's going to break a few tackles. Brought down by Shuss, out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Made a nice cut there. We just kind of overran it. Yeah, we didn't have much contain on that play. Good play from Shus there, getting there to stop anything big from happening. And Price with a man to each side, fullback number 45 to his right. Price takes the snap, hands the ball off, met almost in the backfield. That's number seven, Keenan Campbell. Great tackle there from number five, Nate Sandy. Looks like Anthony almost had him wrapped up there, just was a little short. Anthony's doing a great job getting in the backfield. It's just sometimes tough to make the play when you go flying in there that fast. 14's back into the game now. We'll see what they do here on second and long. That was Campbell's first touch of the game, that handoff right there, yet to be tested against Lilyhorn, who has stayed strong in coverage all year. Second down and 11 from the right hash mark. Meissner takes the snap, rolls out left, looks to throw, complete caught by number two, Tayshawn Miller, brought down by Brody Schuss. I'm 
short of the first, going to be about a third nice and four. Nice tackle there by Brody in open space there. Meissner's going to line up, takes the snap, rolls out right. Doesn't look very comfortable in the pocket and overthrows his intended target, Keenan Campbell. Did have a wide open receiver there. Unfortunately, again, this is a young sophomore quarterback who's just struggling to get the ball on his men right now. So that is. Yeah, the guy would have been a first down. He dropped his elbow there in the throw. And if you drop your elbow, it's always going to go over. You got to get your elbow up over your shoulder when you're making that throw. Nice, easy release. That could have been an easy throw, but young kids, it's uh, he'll learn. He'll be in the future something to watch for, but right now, showing the nerves a little bit. Cade Smith back with the boot. A good kick. Auckland running back decides not to touch it, which ultimately is the right decision as the ball bounces into the end zone and takes a tight and bounce. Fountain definitely has a good kicker. Left-footed kid. As Bill Belichick has taught all of us, left-footed kickers are tricky to catch the ball off of. My dad would appreciate that too, being a lefty. Yep. That, that kid got another nice boot. I mean, that one he had the wind at his back. <laughs> and here comes the Titan offense. Back out. Alex Martinez, the lone back in the backfield. Marcinich takes the snap, fakes the handoff, finds Jaden. And Jaden is ultimately met by number 11, Tremaine Shaw. And Shaw was talking a lot of smack pregame. So you got to think that after that tackle, Jaden was probably hearing it from Tremaine. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off. Martinez finds a hole, which is filled quickly as he's brought down at the 24-yard line, bringing up a third and six. Number 10, who was in on that tackle, banged up his ankle, ankle right there. And number 10, that's Anthony Johnson Griffin, the senior inside linebacker. He looks upset. He's walking fine. It just looks like a little tweak, though. Kind of a big play right here for about third and seven. Marcinich motions Baca in, motions him out. The defensive back, Jackie Jordan, in coverage, finds Martinez, which is deflected yet again by number 92, Trevor Coleman, having himself a night with two pass deflections in a sack yeah, on the first four drives for the Titans. Fort Carson... Defensive linemen are just some dogs right now. They're, they're playing with their hearts, and they're they're doing their jobs. That's all you can ask for from these guys. And he did a great job there. You always tell your defensive ends, if you don't get there, get your hands up, make yourself tough to throw over. He's done that twice tonight. Very impressive. What's impressive is he's done it consistently on third down. And a boot into a the nice, wind. Nice spiral punt right there. Now nah, you fair caught that. And you can't fair run that. Caught. Number 27 fair caught the ball, but that's that's a nice kick right there. A little miscommunication from the the returners is one called for a fair catch and one attempted to return the ball. What is the rule on that, Mr. New and Once if, one signals it, it's dead, because that's what it's gonna be read by the defenders. So uh, the referees are always gonna blow that one dead. That's why I'm not always a fan of putting two guys back there because one will think one thing, one will think the other. But some teams like it, especially on a windy night like this because you're never quite sure where the ball's going to end up. And Meissner back out for his first first down and three drives. Price the back in the backfield. And it appeared as one of the Trojan wide receivers was lined up in front of the line. And that's going to be caught over the middle. That's number seven, Keenan Campbell. 
was his first catch of the night. So looks like we sent a lot of pressure on that play, almost got there, but that left some receivers open, which allowed them to get that pass off. You know, I'm going to give props to that young quarterback there. He recognized that his wide receiver needed to be off the line. If he doesn't recognize it, throws that pass because the tight end released also, that would have been an ineligible man downfield. That would have been a penalty on them that brought the play back. So great job by that young man recognizing formation and getting that fixed. And I will say Meister has not looked rattled. He's looked very comfortable back there for being a sophomore quarterback in what is his first varsity start as he was being consoled by coaches and players down on the field assuming pregame nerves were what got to him. The handoff to Price. Price met at the line for no gain. Yeah, Ryder, I would have to agree with that. I think um, seeing him first quarter, he, he was a little shaken. He was a little scared, but he's slowly getting more comfortable. He's definitely spent more time in the pocket, and he's just getting ready to sit there and throw passes. So this kid is slowly adjusting. We'll see if our defense can now adjust to this. Well, and as offense. we mentioned earlier, Caleb Keats is their uh, junior quarterback who normally starts and has started all six games prior to this, in which he had a concussion last week. So it'll be I'm sure Meister was not expecting to start this week, but here he is. And Keats was a dual threat. He's a runner and a thrower, so... Meisner seems like more of a thrower. One, we have the sniffer again. Meisner's going to line up with Price. The backfield fakes the handoff, and it gets hit hard, but gets the throw off into four Titan defenders. And that's number 26 meeting him in the backfield. Who other than Lucas Bettendorf, who started off that Ponderosa game with an interception on the very first play of the game against a Creek transfer quarterback. And that was close to a roughing the passer, but the refs deemed that there was no stopping Lucas on that. He had to, he got there within the window for it to be a legal hit on the quarterback. No, good for Lucas for just going hard. I mean, got good the, pressure the, on the kids that start to stutter are the ones that always get the penalty pulled. So you, if you're going hard, you just got to make that hit. And that brings up a third and nine with seven minutes on the clock. Meissner takes the snap, drops back to throw, flag on the play, and it's intercepted! Intercepted by Peyton Auckland at the 28-yard line. But Whatever. wait just a minute, folks. There's a flag on the field. I'm going to guess this one's going to be on us because the ref that should have spotted it walked away. I wonder if we lined up the neutral zone. If I had to guess, that's what happened. Nope. Nope, never mind. Illegal procedure on them. We'll decline that. That'll be our ball. And that's going to go as Auckland's first interception of the night. And we'll see this replay here. You see the illegal motion there. Meissner the throw over the middle into two Titan defenders, which is ultimately picked off by Peyton Auckland. Yeah, that throw was made to a corral of Titans, so that's a great opportunity to get an interception right there. Good play from Peyton. A corral of Titans. <laughs> Glad to know that college thing I'm paying for is working out for you. <laughs> Marcinich takes the snap under center. Jaden met again in the backfield. That was a very slow developing play, and Font was all over that. And I'd be interested to know what our play count is, but if I had to guess, I'd say we've thrown the ball three times, and we've ran the ball 14 times. You know, a windy night like that, that's kind of to be expected. Well, Plus, it's kind of our game. That's mm -hmm. that's a, a Brookhart staple is we got to run the ball to throw the ball. And we do have very good backs. Three good of them. Line. Can't hand off to Alex Martinez. That's a Alex. nice Lots of left side. side. And three, number three, Alexander Rivera with a big hit for the Trojans. Yeah, that was a great open field tackle from that young man, but also a great run from Alex Martinez. That's going to bring up a third and two. Six minutes left to play in the second quarter. Love to see the Titans get another score before half, get some good momentum going. And Marcinich with a back to each side. Doyle, the lone receiver to the bottom. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off. Martinez, enough for a first down. Tackled at the 42-yard line. First down, Titans. Can't really ask for much better than that. I mean, each of these run plays we've had is about a gain of six or seven. If you continue to do that down the field, that's going to help you score. It was a nice, uh, the left side of the line that time just washed off the D-line and cleared the room for the running back. 
And Martinez is having himself a night so far. Marcinich tries the hard count. DePietro over there doing TikTok dances, faking a sleep. Doyle in motion, lines up behind Archuleta. Fakes the handoff to Lawrence. Over the middle, caught. That's number 19, Brian Doyle. Good tackle coming in from number three again. Doyle looks a little shaken up after that play. Gets uh, up with a little bit of a limp coming off the field. Always worry when he gets hit in that knee. Yep, he's a tough kid though. He injured that knee against Regis last year at Regis, which they just redid their turf. Yeah, they their got turf a was evil not very little good turf before. there before. <laughs> they call it a turf monster. That was a legitimate turf monster <laughs> at that place. Marcinich is going to be under center, turf right behind Juju. Martinez with the snap, pushing Logan oh, White into nice. the defender, following his blocks. It's a nice run right there. And and gone and for nothing, and he got a whole bunch of yards out of yeah, it. Yeah, Alex is just uh, Alex and Jaden are both playmakers. Um, they, they get hit once, they'll keep going. Alex there stuttered a bit, kept on his feet though, kept pushing, kept driving, and gets him close to a first down. We'll have a third and short coming up. Speaking no matter what, we got two plays to pick up this first down. And speaking of playmakers, Lawrence runs a 4-4-40, which is extremely impressive and fast. That's the handoff to number 46, his first touch of the game. That's Brody Dodge with his first touch of the game there. Brody joined the team about four weeks ago, which is why his name's not even in the roster. He's also in my homeroom. <laughs> that was still a nice little run from him to pick up the first down. And Marcinich rolls out left side, turns back right. That's a there. Probably a smart play just throwing that one away. Yeah, had a lot, lots of receivers to his back shoulder, but as a high school quarterback, that's just a tough tough throw to go hash to there, hash. There was a, so much misdirection there, I think we uh, kind of got confused Well, ourselves. it looks like the play there was a fake left and right. I mean, we had two down linemen. We had Cruz and we had Jack Morgan rolling out heavy to the right side. So it looked like... It was definitely set up as a screen, but it, it could have gone either way. And Marcinich takes the snap, finds Lawrence. Lawrence... It's another nice job. Steps Especially to the, the outside. left side of the line is really getting a good push right now. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As that brings up a third and seven for the Titans. And we'll see, we need to have our... More, Jack and Cruz need to block heavy as they're facing Trevor Coleman, who has been a menace on third down for the Trojans. Baca running onto the field late. Titans running the clock down, just under three minutes to play. Marcinich takes the snap, looks right side, almost, almost picked off. Intercepted. Baca the target, almost intercepted by Zachary Sanders. Sanders with a great read right there, almost took that one to the house. Oh, if he catches that, he's in the end zone right now. That's. That's a great defensive play here from the Trojans. Looks like we're gonna punt into this wind. Hopefully we can pin down deep. And Carson back to punt. As again, the Trojans have two men back to return. Carson, a big punt. They're gonna let it bounce. It's a great punt right there. Oh. 34 there, should have let it bounce yep. one more time to see where that would have gone. That's Neuenschwander on the catch right there, but we might have to have a talk on the way home about how to do punt coverage. A little coach on the road happening later. <laughs> Those are the kind you let it bounce one more time and see where it goes. It might help you out. I remember when I played sports, you always, after a bad performance, you never look forward to the car ride home with dad. <laughs> That's never a fun car ride. I myself get to sit through that car ride, so we will <laughs> see how it goes. So far, no ice cream for anybody. <laughs> and Meissner back in, a three wide receiver bunch to the bottom of your screen. Meissner takes the snap, hand, fakes the handoff. That's caught by number two, Tyshawn Miller. Great block Continues there Continues to fight. Goodness. And that's enough for a Trojan's first down. Well, we just needed to knock him out of bounds and he spun right out of it. And as JD mentioned, that's Simeon Gibbs. The six foot five, 220 pound tight end. 
which is pretty much my height and weight out there blocking for the Trojans. Yeah, probably runs a 4-4 four four just like you two, Just Ryder. like me, just yeah. like me. And now they're flipping it. They got the three wide receiver bunch to the top of your screen now. And as he stands, they've started to fill up a little bit. Not as many open seats. That was an early start game. So it was an early start. And another flag. They're not going to call the play dead. Meister's going to roll out and slide two yards in front of the line. This might be another. And the Trojan coaches don't look too This might be another happy. illegal procedure. I'm not sure their alignment was legal. And it looks like it is as they're asking Thielen to accept or decline. And I would assume he's going to accept this one. Yeah, he's going to take it, push it back five. For the people at home, what is an illegal procedure, Mr. New? Well, in that situation, I couldn't really see where they were lined up. Probably they left the receiver covered. They did not, you, got, you can only have four guys in the backfield. They might have had five in the backfield, or they might have had somebody covered, which means they have a receiver over him, and that player ran downfield. Since it was right at the, he threw it right at the snap, so I'm guessing he probably had five guys in the backfield. That's cheating. Uh, to Veronica Johnson in the chat, the first touchdown from the Titans was scored by Alex Martinez. We're hoping to see some more action from the Titans this evening. And sending the fullback in motion, Meissner pressured, gets the throw off, well set up and hit right hard there. by Saez. Way to retrace. Saez with the slam. Anthony retracing right there. You love to see a D-lineman make a, make a tackle. That's the first touch the we've seen. That's Terrence Morris with his first reception and first gain of the game. That was really nice recovery because that play was well set up. A lot of people got eye action to that fullback going in motion and forgot about the little screen the other way. Nice recovery. Got a minute 45 left on the clock. The clock is winding down in this first half. The Titans still have three timeouts. It'll be interesting to see if they hold them here, how they attempt to play. Meissner rolling out again. McGuckin hits oh. him hard. Good oh. behind. Oh. How's that turf taste, Meissner? Good. That's me. Billy McGuckin. Billy said, I'm not even going to wrap up. I'm just going to flick him with my finger and see where he goes. Boom. <laughs> Billy McGuckin meeting Meissner in the backfield. It props to Meissner. He's staying in he the did. game. Poor kid did not see that coming, but he got up like it was nothing. So props to that kid. Might help if he didn't have Billy landing on top of him. Yeah, that's true. Billy, we know that's going to go on the huddle. Great play, man. But, hey, he's going to hear Billy's footsteps in his sleep tonight. So, Clock stick, and we're down to f almost 45 seconds left. I'm guessing if Fountain Smart here is going to run the ball, see if we call a timeout. And that's the handoff. Again, 32, his second touch of the game. We call timeout, so we're going to get the ball back. And that's going to be fourth and 17. 33 seconds left on the clock. Titans lead 7 to 0. The Trojans looks like they have a few injuries. A 62, Matthew Jennings, the yep. senior lineman, limping off the field there after that tough Big third man down. hobbling off that field. Not sure what happened to him. We'll see if he's back in. They definitely are have some injury problems. They, as we talked about, they've lost their starting quarterback last week. It seems about two weeks ago, based on the film, they lost one of their big offensive linemen, a kid who's about 280 and about six feet, two inches tall, number 77. He's not playing tonight either. I saw him on crutches earlier. It's kind of too bad they've got so many injuries going around right now. But this is a big game for us, the conference game and everything. We need to try to get a W here. So everybody, every little bit helps. Let's see where Peyton lines up to take this punt. Again, the most important thing is catch the ball. And a bad snap rolls out a horrible punt. Oh, and roll. a big block. That's number 18 on that block. Almost hit him. That's Jack. This, this punter Volpe. might be Volpe, their eh? MVP. Uh, I saw him make a play on film where the snap went over his head. He went back about 15 yards, picked it up, punted it on the rollout with his left foot and dropped it on the three yard line. That was against Pine Creek. It didn't matter, they lost the game 40 to 10, but still, that was the most impressive 
punt I've seen in a very, very long time. I would agree. This, this punter is definitely uh, yeah MVP star of the show right now carrying this team. 24 seconds left in the half. Titans up 7-0 with two timeouts. Marcinich takes the snap, throws the ball. Martinez Way to get out of bounds, does a little tippy-toe. Ballerina move there. Now we got to be careful because that ball could have been picked. If four reads that a little better and makes a break, he could have picked that one and taken it to the house. I, I, I'd i rather see take a few chances deeper right here and let the clock bleed down. And if we, I don't like the little running outs right now. Marcinich steps back over the middle, caught Archuleta, big hit. That's number three, Alexander Rivera. Okay, just like college, that's gonna stop the clock now to move the chains. We gotta call a play, get this going. 14 seconds left. We still have two timeouts. And they choose to use one here. Probably smart. With 12 seconds remaining, the Titans have one timeout left at the 48 yard line. And TK, I've seen him make it from about 50. And as the winds die down a little bit, probably get try to get to at least the 20 yard line for a comfortable field goal here. Yeah, he definitely run two plays here with the timeout. One thing I'm surprised that we haven't tried a little bit more is the uh, trying to draw them off sides. I know we've got that in our uh, playbook, and I saw them jump against Doherty. They jumped about three or four times. So they're, they're, they're a very aggressive defense, but sometimes aggressive defenses you can get to jump if you uh, know what you're doing out here. So not saying it's going to work right now. There's no point in trying to get just five yards, but I'm surprised we haven't done that at all the first half. Here comes Marcinich, three receivers to the top. Lawrence, didn't like the left side, went to the right side. Marcinich sits in the backfield, gets hit hard. The throw, Lawrence intercepted by the Trojans. Jackie Jordan with six seconds left in the half. The interception. Can't, can't really complain there. I mean, you got small amount of time left in the clock gonna throw the ball up you gotta take jump a chance ball. gotta take a chance six seconds i don't see uh trojans doing anything they might even take a knee here and so. these, these trojan defensive backs they're doing everything they can as they've held the titans to seven here in the first half though the trojan offense cannot seem to put much together as it appears meissner is just going to take a knee and they're going to run this six seconds this is definitely the best defense we've seen this year which is a good challenge. Meissner takes the snap, takes the knee. That's going to bring us into the half. Legend Titans 7, the Fountain Fort Carson Trojans 0. Do a quick shout out before half. We got Lee and Marcia Garcia, Cruz's grandparents, coming in from Texas. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you in the next half.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Trojan Field, home of Fountain Fort Carson. As we are here, the Titans lead seven to the Trojans zero. Got the gentlemen warming up on the field right now. And before we get into this second half, let's give a very special shout out to Brooks and Henry Johnston, who are currently watching their dad's football team play. Hopefully the, uh, the Titans can put up some more points this half, but so far they've been looking pretty decent against this not bad at all Trojans team. Cheer loud and proud, Brooks and Henry. We're gonna need it the second half. And over the course of that halftime, as you guys were taking a break, getting chips, getting snacks, and uh, we saw what I would say one of the best band performances I've ever seen from a high school band. I would agree big time. I'm, I'm personally not a, a huge band guy, but I, I was mesmerized by this band with the lights coming in, the beautiful majestic sounds coming out of them instruments. It was, it was a great experience. My oldest son was in the band at Legend, and I remember sitting in the snow at Air Force Stadium in the state championship competitions about I'm not even sure how long ago, but a couple years. I'm guessing. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm not a much of a band expert either. I'm going to predict that Fountain Fort Carson is going to be in that competition at the Air Force Academy this year and probably plays very high. And that's impressive. And setting the scene for this second half as well as that band performance, Pikes Peak behind us. And, man, what a sunset we have here at Fountain Fort Carson. A beautiful sunset, some orange, some blue, some purple. Kind of a Titan sky. Titan Sky, or some would say Bronco Sky, but hopefully it's not a Bronco Sky because we want to win this game. We do, and uh, as the sun has gone behind the beautiful Pikes Peak in the mountains in Colorado, we have uh, slowed down a lot on the wind. So I would guess if this kicker is decent, this will be close to a touchback. We'll see how he kicks the ball, but there is very little to no well, wind. It's this ball. lefty again. He's, he's got a leg. He's a, kicker. He's got a foot. Baca, the no returner. No problem reaching the end yep. zone. And he dropped it <laughs> so in the end zone. So in high school ball, as soon as it crosses the end line in the end zone, it's dead. It's a touchback automatically. Unlike college, they can't bring it out. Not that you. And is to. that strictly for the safety of the players? Yeah, that's uh, trying to cut down on the collisions and everything else. As a coach, the kickoff is still one of the plays that terrifies me for many reasons. And. It, the first play back from the break. Marcinich takes the snap. Hand off Lawrence. Lawrence finds a hole. Beautiful breaks run. a tackle. Nice burst right there. It's a nice job on the right side of the line that time. Sealing him off. Getting a nice hole. That's one Jack thing that Morgan off the edge right there. Nice job. Alex and Jaden both share that special trait where they find a hole or an opening. They'll make a quick little cut and they'll just put on the burners. Both of them are... Some quick running backs and can make some big plays out of not a lot. Two running backs in the backfield, one to each side of Marcinich. Marcinich hands the ball off Lawrence again. Lawrence puts his foot in the turf, slices and dices through the defensive line for a gain of five. Nice job finding the hole right there. We had a backside pull. Looks like we got Brian Doyle. Receiver down on this side of the field looking nice and healthy again. Good he got a little that. shaken up at the end of the half. So, yeah, it's good to see him back. Martinez, handoff again. Breaks three tackles, breaks four, and it takes a fifth to bring him down as that is enough for another Titans first down. He hit the hole really hard that time. That was a nice looking run. And again, one thing Alex does a great job at is even if he's touched by one or two guys, he just keeps driving them legs and always ends up getting an extra two or three yards off his runs. Marcinich in the backfield, running back to each side, takes the snap, hands off Lawrence. And for the first time this half, and maybe even tonight, Lawrence has held to little to no gain. That one didn't look as crips. The old line kind of stood up too high that time. Not Pad level got too high. The pull wasn't able to get around there and seal things off very well. Two wide receivers split to each side. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off again. Martinez keeps those feet moving, and forward progress is going to bring him to the 39 as the Titans continue to drive into the Trojan zone. Now that was a better pull right there. That was Cruz pulling around from the right guard position. Nice seal block there, created a nice hole there for the, the running back. 
And that brings up a second, third down in five. They hand the ball off Lawrence, met in the backfield, but still drives, which now brings up a fourth and two. It's a nice job falling forward right there. The way we've been running, I would love to just see another quick little run up the middle or see some Coach Brookhart trickery right on this play. We'll see what happens. We got uh, heavy package in, two tight ends. And staying out, fourth and two. Brody Dodge is in at fullback right now, double tight ends. Look for maybe a puller. I bet Cruz is going to pull from the. Nope, it's the other side pulling. Marcinich, handoff. Martinez, enough for a first down. Brought down at the 29 yard line. And that's number six, Miles McClarity. Can't get there soon enough as Martinez rushes for a Titans first down. And the Titans, six continuous runs for six continuous gains. Got that same heavy package in. Martinez again. Nice, nice lead block there by the fullback. Nice job getting out to the next level. Yeah, this right here is all you can ask for again. I think the Titans have very, executed that very well this play and this game overall. Lots of running plays where we're gaining five or six yards per play, but that's enough to continue to drive down the field and get first downs and get us nice and close to that end zone. And we'll see if the Titans change it up here as they have only ran the ball here in the second half. Still have Brody Dodge in at fullback. Cruz pulls around again. Jaden met in the backfield and Throws tosses a man. A man. Beautiful play from Jaden right there. He just tossed him. He whined and dined. Number 34, Cade Smith. Got thrown into the ground from Jaden Lawrence. Not only is he a speed demon, but man is he strong. Bringing up a critical third down and three here on the 24 yard line as the Titans look to continue their drive. Coach Brookhart definitely has found something in his package. He likes with the double tight ends and a fullback. Marcinich takes the snap. Jaden gets met in the backfield but keeps the feet moving. Forward progress and it looks to stop him about six inches shy of the yard to gain. Yep, another Colorado Springs ball placement right there. Yeah, I looked, seen that, that looks pretty close to me. but And, the, and he just moved it back again. He did move it back. <laughs> Thanks, Stripes. Like, I've never <laughs> seen that move before. He's done that about 87 times to me. And we'll see. Lined up in the exact same set. We'll see Marcinich again. Surprise. Hands the ball off to Jaden. Jaden oh, makes nice. it miss. It. Doyle the He's blocker. Jaden into there the end zone. Down, Touchdown, legend. That's a great way to start the second half. Uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful drive done all from the ground. Didn't even need to put the ball in the air. I think uh, the, the Titans kind of found their groove. That's a great way to come into this second half. Well, the first half where they were getting us was off the edge, sending the players. So the double tight ends in there and a fullback definitely was a halftime adjustment that Coach Brookhart drew up. Nice job by the Titans that time on that drive. Auckland the holder. Brady or TK the kick. Auckland. Hold, kick, kick is good. There we go. As TK is still 100% on extra points and kicks this year through six games. 100%, just like 100%. your grade in all of your classes, right, yep. Ryder? Yep. Okay. He's got that 4.0 of a kicker. <laughs> And the Titans are driving as they now lead the Trojans 14-0 as the special teams units for both teams come back out. And the Trojans continue to have the same return men as that's Terrence Morris and Zachary Sanders back to return. And what I've noticed is that this Trojan special teams, they must know we do that little short kick because they have a guy, number 40, right there at the 20, making sure we can't do that short kick. Well, the perfect place to put a pooch is right there at the 30, and they've got two guys sitting at the 30, so. And a kick from Carson, but it's going to be caught at the two-yard line. That's number 23. He's going to bring it out, and 23 is down, but they're going to make him get down twice. Is that Zachary I he, he did stay up on that play, but that was still a way to make a stop there. I, I I think this is kind of new to the Titans. They haven't seen um, anyone really run the ball like these guys do on kickoff returns. So they're, they're getting some, some decent yards on these returns, but I think our defense will have an easy time stopping the Trojans' offense. 
So that opening drive took off nearly five minutes on the quarter. It's a good drive, eat some clock, nothing wrong with that. Now I have a two touchdown lead. One for those of you who tuned in late, coming back from halftime after you got all your snacks and drinks, the Titans rushed the ball nine times into the end zone for Jaden Lawrence's first touchdown of the night. As they go Wildcat, and he's gonna get a few, that's number five. He makes so many men miss. That's number five, Matthias Price, into the end zone for a Trojans touchdown high step in his way to the military men for military appreciation night. Touchdown Trojans. So I definitely, definitely spoke too soon there. Um, that was just a beautiful play. We knew number five was an athlete. We knew he was a big kid and he just broke this whole team. We had missed tackle after missed tackle. And I think he broke 11 tackles from 11 Titan defenders on that play. Matthias Price high stepping into the end zone for Fountain Fort Carson's first touchdown and score of the night as their lefty kicker takes the field. And the kick is up and the kick is good from the Trojans and here goes their cannon that they do every time they score as the fuse has been lit. And boom goes the cannon. It's a unique little celebration. I mean, and it looks the, like the, the military, very festive, very festive. the army, are going to do push ups for the seven points scored from the Trojans. And I wonder if that's something they do just tonight or if that's something that they do every night for a home football game. That would have been a lot when they beat the, uh, I forget who they beat. 52 to three or something like that. I couldn't do 52 push-ups. I'm pretty sure the neighborhood around our stadium would let us have a cannon. I don't, I don't know. I'm th they complain about the loudspeakers being <laughs> too loud, so I'm thinking a cannon would probably violate an HOA <laughs> ordinance. Oh yeah, if I was out there doing those push-ups and, and then the Titans scored more than three touchdowns, I'd have to throw in the towel. The kick is off into the end zone as Baca is going to let it go for a second time. Well, our drive took almost five minutes off the clock. Theirs took about 10 seconds. So I guess the good news is we're going to dial it back up with our offense. Hopefully we can get a nice long drive again. We'll see if we come out same formation or something. When you got to wonder, I don't see any film tents like Legend has over there, but you got to wonder what the Fountain Fort Carson defensive coordinator said. As we come out in almost the same exact set, though we have a receiver to each side, Jaden gets the ball and rushes for about three yards, leaving the Titans with a second and seven to go. As the Trojan band slowly makes their way back up after their amazing halftime performance, I must say. Marcinich with a wide receiver to each side and a running back to each side. Hard count, almost gets the Trojan defense to jump. That was a little better discipline by Fountain right there, holding. I saw him jump against Doherty about four times. Marcinich Ball fumbles loose. the snap and smartly just falls on it as that brings up a third and 11. Fountain brings in an extra DB here guessing that we're going to take to the air. We've got our crazy formation right here with three trips to the top. Marcinich takes the snap. It's a low snap. And again, for the third time tonight, the pass is batted before it even gets to the line. That's Zachary Sanders. And that brings up fourth and 11, and the Titans are going to punt. And I don't know if it's just me, but after that touchdown run from Mateus Price, Feels like the tides are turning a little bit here. Momentum is definitely, definitely shifted. Not in the good way. No, Titans have been playing on their heels after that touchdown. Um, I think we got comfortable a little too quick and we're gonna need to turn things around quickly if we wanna see some change in this game. And as we've developed a run game, we have not developed a passing game. So it'll be interesting to see what Mr. Brookhart draws up as the kick is off and the kick is short. Very short, and it takes a fountain bounce all the way back 
to the 40 as the Trojans are going to start with tremendous field position here down seven with five and a half remaining in the third quarter. We'll see what they come out and if they come out with that wildcat look with number five again, it definitely was successful the last time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's how the teamwork goes, but we need to see this Titans defense make a stand here so we can give the offense some confidence again. Um, it, it goes both ways. Defense gives up a big play, offense goes out playing on their heels, and it just all fumbles back. So you went 14's back out there, but five's got a bounce in his step. He, I think he wants the ball right now. Meissner. Hopefully we get a stop. Motion's the receiver, and he's going to get the ball. That's number seven, and he's going to throw the ball! And it's got, that's number 45, the fullback Jackson Haydenberg. Breaking tackles into the end zone for a Felton touchdown, folks. That is two plays for the Trojans. And that is two touchdowns out of the half. And it looks like there's a flag for excessive celebration on the Trojans' sideline. But the play will still stand. That's just as good as it gets. A little trick play on the defense. We've been going hard. We've been... Uh, Making good tackles, but I think we've been going a little too aggressive and haven't been thinking about dropping back and watching that right there. So And it looks like that was not the designed play as Keenan Campbell was contained in the backfield on what appeared to just be a jet sweep. And he found a wide open fullback in Jackson Haydenburg down the field. As the result of the play is a touchdown, but an unsportsmanlike conduct. Should be enforced on the kickoff. And the Trojan fans not too happy with that one, though I'm sure they were paying attention to the sideline on that touchdown pass. Got a shout out coming in from um, SoCal in Idaho. Shouting out Mr. Caleb Lillyhorn. Hits it, oh, an extra point almost blocked from Auckland. Props to Caleb tonight for playing some Pretty outstanding defense as he's been doing a great and job. Here as a goes the cannon, folks. The fuse is lit and boom goes the cannon. That's way too soon to hear that cannon again. Yep, Momentum has definitely touchdowns. shifted. We gotta get something here. Now if we uh this would be a 15 yarder on so I, the I, kickoff, so they're going to be pushed back. I believe I just saw the coaches talking to the kicker, so definitely keep our eyes peeled for anything special on this kick here. So he's going to be kicking this thing from the 25-yard line. The good news about this, even big leg lefty can't make it to the end zone, I don't think. Without the, the wind now dying down, we're going to get a return on this. And because, because of the fact that where he's kicking it from, there's a lot of space back there, so if we field this cleanly, we have a shot to get a decent return. Be nice to get it out about midfield. And we've got our tag right now up on the screen for this YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe if you love the Titans and want to stay updated on scores and games. We'll be live streaming each of the games. And a squib kick, the refs blow the whistle. Offsides, moving back another five. That's going to be a false start. You don't see that one too often, a false start on the kickoff. No, and where they're sitting, I don't know what I'm going to expect to see from these guys. Um, when you saw there, they did a little bit of a squib kick. We'll see if well, they stay with the play. And that's two touchdowns for the Trojans in less than 20 seconds on two plays. As the Titans go out, rush the ball, great first drive. Trojans come out, rushing touchdown from the Wildcat. And four and out leads to a uh, jet sweep, trick play, touchdown to the fullback. As Fort Carson steps back to kick the ball off now from the 20 yard line, 15 yards behind where they normally are. And a big, big kick as Lawrence has to step back, catches the ball at the 12. Not a lot going, but I might have spoke to, and Lawrence met immediately by Myron Johnson, the sophomore linebacker, making a big play at the varsity level, representing the class of 26 out there on the field. Yeah, so normally that'd be a pretty good return on a normal kickoff, but the Trojans kicked from extremely deep, so that is honestly a win for the Trojans stopping the Titans at around the 30 yards. Once again, that kicker might be this MVP right now. And we come out again 
with a two tight end set as Farley and Archuleta are the tight ends. Martinez receives the ball and it looks like the Trojans know that the run is coming is that his number one Jack Fox the senior inside linebacker making the play in the backfield making it a second and 14 here from the t for the Titans yeah props to this uh, Trojans coaching staff and the team overall as they've uh, adjusted this whole game to the Titans and have played a lot of uh, quick downs to just adjust and make stops Coming out in the same exact formation, Marcinich takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Martinez, steps back, throws. Baca, and then pass is intercepted. That's number 11, Tremaine Shaw. He's going, he makes a man miss. He's going all the way into the end zone for a Trojan pick six. We got a flag back here about the 27. My guess is the interception will stand. Might be a block in the back from backside. And that's Tremaine Shaw. Man, was he talking smack before the game on the field. And it appears as he's backed it up as the first time all game that we've thrown his way, he picks the ball off. Honestly, not a terrible throw from Michael, but that was just great coverage from number 11 there. He was there the whole way and was able to pull in that ball for the pick. And man, have the Trojans come out guns a blazing. They're predicting our runs, they're picking off our passes, and our defense is on their heels. I don't, don't know what the flag was for. I guess they picked it up. Maybe it just fell out of the ref's pocket. And here comes a bad snap. Auckland almost blocks it again. But there it is. The Titans going to half, up seven. But Fountain Fort Carson has come out in less than eight minutes and scored three touchdowns as they now take the lead over Legend. And Cannon's getting quite the workout this third quarter. Well, this is when you need leadership to step up. And this is where it's going to be interesting to see who, who will step up and be that leader for the Titans. And man, are these troops getting a workout too. 21 push-ups on top of the 14, on top of the seven. If my math is correct, that's 42 push-ups. More than I can do, so respect to them. And we thank them for serving our country. As here comes the kicker yet again, Cade Smith again to kick off for the Trojans. We'll see if he uh, rips this one deep again or if they give him a chance to return it. Last time, they had a nice, uh, momentum was still there when they made that nice cover down there and tackled us on the 30. And Cade Smith with Kicks the that one high. This boom. is going to be returnable. Baca receives the ball at the three. Baca finds a hole, makes a man miss up the sideline. Out of bounds at about the 28-yard line, so about three yards further than he would have gained had he just fair caught that ball. Titans offense coming out on the field now. We're hoping to see some sort of momentum change as the uh, offense has just been struggling after that touchdown early in the uh, third quarter. Yeah, it was a great opening drive to start the half. Since then, it's been nothing for us. Fountain has really found their groove right now. We need, we need something to break our way here. We've got a heavy, heavy set to the left as we're gonna hand the ball off to Jaden. He's got blockers ahead. Jaden cuts up the middle, takes two men to bring him down for a gain of about nine. So it looks like the Titans are still most likely going to be keeping it on the ground as our passing tonight has just not been there. We've had lots of deflected balls, just had a pick six for the Trojans, so hopefully something in this run game can change the Marcin, it chance the ball off. Lawrence! Finding his feet again for another gain of 10 plus. And that's enough for a Titans first down as the run attack is back and no, I ain't a rapper. <laughs> that was a nice run right there. Nice, nice pickup of the first down. We needed that. Two wide receiver bunch behind the line. Riken blocking, but Alex Martinez met. 
missed the block that time. Sometimes all it takes is one or two things to go wrong on the play, and it's going to be dead before it really gets started. And the Titans have yet to establish a passing game as Marcinich has under five throw attempts on the night, though he does have a touchdown, but he also has an interception. Marcinich hands the ball off. Lawrence flips it to Baca the with the reverse, has some blockers, hurdles a man, and pushed out of bounds with some extracurricular activity from Anthony Johnson Griffin shoving Baca. That was kind of too bad. That was set up nicely. Just couldn't get the corner turned in time and Fountain did a nice job recovering. I tell you, this, this Fountain defense is athletic. Yep, these are some some real defensive players right here. They, they've just found ways to keep adjusting to our changes in defense, or in offense, so good Third on this Third and defense. two. DePietro yells out to Michael. DePietro had nothing but high praise for the young quarterback after big wins against Schapp and Pondo. Going to be short of the first down. And he's down. going to be short, as that brings up about a fourth and one. And Brookhart has shown he's not afraid to go for it. Offense currently staying on the field. Here comes Brody Dodge, the fullback, which most would assume for blocking purposes. This is a big call right here. This, this a big fourth down, this is huge. fourth and one. The Trojan faithful getting loud. Alex up the middle, enough Got for a tight down. and first down. Their third of the drive. Okay, this is good. Getting a little confidence back. We got Moving a shout sticks. out coming in for the Titans from some grandparents watching in Brighton. Thank you guys for joining us this evening. Three wide receiver package here on the field. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off to who other? Alex Martinez for a gain of nine. Just shy of the first down. Nice this little shuffle step he took right yeah, there. Yeah, this drive is currently looking like that. That touchdown drive we had earlier this quarter. Um, I, I like the way that we get Alex in there. A little shifty dude running up the middle, making plays. So let's hope we can continue to drive down the field and get another Titans touchdown. And they've been splitting carries relatively even, as that is Jaden and Alex. As Michael hands the fake off, he had a man in Brian Deep, Got but he decides to check down. That's Jaden Lawrence, follows a blocker and slips. Just short. At the one yard line. Great play from the Titans right there. Is Jaden, as that is gonna bring up a first in goal. Michael had a man deep in Brian Doyle, but decided that he could not get the ball there on the run and made decides it, for the check down. Made a nice smart play right there. Take the easy one. Great play. Man, I tell you, Michael has win. Michael has grown a lot as a quarterback from the beginning of the season till now. I mean, watching that, that takes kid move the hand off. The and the ref close. is running across the goal line, but saying he is short. If we sneeze, the ball is going into the end zone. I expect the Titans to run the ball three times here and punch it in. Looks like we're going super heavy with Three tight ends now, and a fullback. And that's Nick in motion, doing the stutter steps, and the handoff. That's, that's Jaden in, in for the touchdown. And Legend, with the extra point pending, is right back in this game with momentum on their side. That was a nice drive. That's what we needed to kind of get momentum shifted. I wouldn't say that momentum is back to our side right now, but I would definitely say we've evened it out. Which going into the fourth quarter, that's as much as you could hope for with the way the third quarter went. Yeah, so now it's a, a matter of our defense coming out and making Brady, some sort of stop. The extra point is up. And what do you know, the extra point is good from TK. So hopefully the uh, defense can feed off that offensive drive right there. It's a good play. Lots of momentum going our way. Let's get this defense out here and see some momentum coming from the defense now. And our defense should not be tired as they have only faced two plays this half, though those two plays have both gone for touchdowns. Now the bad thing is there's seven seconds left in the third quarter and we have to kick off into the wind, which has kind of started up again a little bit here. And most would say seven seconds isn't enough, but for Fountain Fort Carson this half, 
Seven seconds has been more than enough as they have scored both plays in under seven seconds per play. Need to get down here and cover this thing well. Try to keep him inside the 30. Carson stepping up. Little pooch right there. Little pooch kick. Drop the 20. Fielded. We can't make a tackle, but we do. As time expires in the quarter. Tie ball game going into the fourth. This has so far been an amazing game to watch. We hope you guys are enjoying this from home. We got a whole nother quarter coming up. We'd like to thank our sponsors for tonight. Unbridled Contractors, Rico's Burritos, always delicious, Awaken Chiropractic, and Sarah Colangelo State Farm. Summit Orthodontics, Cardell Homes, Expert Oral Surgical Care, Grease Monkey, and Santortaz Mexican Sandwich Shop. We also got Beerman Consulting, RME Rocky Mountain Eurosport, Shaggy Moose, Allstate, SNR Contractors and Associates, and Guest in Homes. And going back to Rico's Burritos, if you watched or were at our homecoming game against Chaparral, those rally towels that we call the Titan Towel is all thanks to Rico's Burritos. And the Titans looked confused defensively here as we have three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen with only two people to cover, but that's because they're in the Wildcat. Yep, another Wildcat number five going to be stopped with about a gain of two on the play. And luckily when they run this Wildcat, that gives Vote a very easy job of predicting the play they are running. As they are yet to throw. I will say earlier I saw number five throwing the ball a little bit on the sideline. Uh, he, he looked like he had a little bit of an arm, so we'll see if they uh, end up using him at all to get the ball in the air. Be curious to see if they send somebody in motion on a jet sweep also to run off of this. One ride receiver to each side as well as a tight end to each side. Assumed for blocking pur purposes is Mateus Price. Still in the Wildcat takes the snap and is tackled for a loss. And that's Vote on the sideline getting fired up. All five foot four of him. So it seems the Titans have slowly come out of the slump and are starting to learn to tackle again, which is great to see. We know number five is a big kid, but when they, when they get in there on them gang tackles, there's nowhere for number five to go. So hopefully the Titans can keep up this tackling effort. Not quite sure how they gained a yard on that play, but as we've talked about all night, hometown refs bring up a third and seven as Meissner, Justin Meissner is back in the game, three wide receiver, Bunch to the bottom of your screen. Matthias Price, the lone back in the backfield. And Meissner takes the snap, fumbles it. He's rolls out right side, recovers. Saez, and he can't get the sack as that is caught. Number seven, Keenan Campbell over the middle. Enough for a Trojans first down. That was a pretty nice job by young Meisner once again. Recovering from that botched snap. Keeping his wits about him, finding a guy wide open in the middle of our zone. Meisner comes back out now, back to Wildcat. And we've talked about it consistently all night. Meisner's looked really strong under pressure and has maintained composure throughout the night. Yeah, props on him for coming out and doing his job. I mean, we've said it all night as well. He's, he's a young guy, but he's definitely going to learn a lot from this game, playing a good Titans team. And uh, we'll see how he performs for the rest of the season. For the Trojans charges. remove both tight end blockers as it looks to hurt them. As Matthias Price, again in the Wildcat, rushes up the middle for a gain of one. And sadly, the Coliseum crazies of Legend High School were not able to make the hour and a half drive down here to Fountain, as a lot of them are watching online. You're going to have to talk some of them to cancel on their travel plans on fall break. We're going to need them there for fall. But the Pine Creek game, Pine the Regis game, game, we're going to need them there loud and proud. So, Yes, we will. Stay yes, in we town will. and support your Titans. 
And here's Price rolling out right side. And he's brought down. What a tackle, Nate. Sandy. That was a great job by Nate getting off that block, using his hands right there. Pretty sure he's being held, but you know, get those kind of calls down this south of the metro area. Nate can be held all night too, and he'll still still make a play. He's, he's just an absolute dog on the field. Okay, this this is kind of a big play right here. We got we got third and six. They've got the ball. And it on looks our like side they are the field now. going to stay in the Wildcat as this is the first time Meissner has not been out on a third down. Third and six. The biggest third down of the game so far. Price rolls out right side. And he's not tackled before he meets the yard to gain. As Nate Sandy picked up the first down. Talking back and forth as the Trojan coaches and players all collectively chirping the Titans. And let's just say those Trojan players and coaches are lucky Dan Simington isn't here. Because Dan Simington does not like when you address the other team. And they are going to stay in the Wildcat. That is Matthias. Price in the Wildcat with a wide receiver to each side. Keenan Campbell to the bottom of your screen. He's Watch been 45. Where 45 All goes, five is going to follow him. And he fumbles the snap. He looks one. back to throw. Price deep caught and deep not caught. caught. Not caught. Keenan Campbell got a bit of the yips. Titans catch a very lucky break right there as that would have been in my opinion, a touchdown play as we had one Titan defender behind that receiver who it was a botch somehow snapped. dropped the ball. Botch snapped, he recovered, made a nice throw down the field, dodged the bullet right there. Let's see what we can make of this. So like I said, that's something to, to watch out for. I saw number five thrown on the sideline and I think it's not something we expect because we've seen him run all play as he's a Wildcat quarterback, but he definitely can throw the ball. Matthias Price following his fullback right side, brought down out of bounds by Billy McGuckin. That's going to bring up another third and six as the Titans are yet to stop the Trojans on third down this drive. Titans need to keep composure right now, too. I see Billy out there yapping back at the players. It just needs to be a go, go, go. They're going to try to get in their heads. Meisner back in at quarterback. Let's see what they do here. Keep your eye on number seven. He's been getting loose here against our defense, That's finding Keenan different holes. Campbell, number seven. And number 45, Jackson Hayden Burke. He's not in the game, but here's Meissner Roll back. Out to the left. As the Trojans look to throw, he follows Price, left side. Meissner looks deep. That's Keenan Campbell, but overthrown into double coverage. Nice coverage right there. And the pass is incomplete coverage, courtesy of Brody Schuss and Caleb Lillyhorn. As that brings up a fourth and six, as the Trojan coaches wave the offense off and the special teams on. And coming out again is the Trojans MVP of the night, Cade Smith. This will be uh, interesting to see where he uh, places his ball here. Best thing for us is he kicks it into the end zone, gives us a touchback. Yeah, kicking into a little bit of wind, so if he kicks this one high, it has a chance. Oh, and he does the fake, and he's, and he's brought down. Nice. He's brought great down at play. the 45. The Titans with great field position. And oh. if I'm not mistaken, that looked like it was a designed fake punt from the Trojans as we watch the replay here. I think they had another illegal procedure. Possibly there's a Number flag 11. on the far side of the field. Getting off the edge. We'll decline this. Bringing him down. Yep. And that's another illegal procedure from the Trojans. That's a mental error. Well, that was huge. That was huge. Not sure why he didn't kick it. Well, and it looked like to me that that was a designed fake punt. Okay, we got great field position right now. We got slight momentum swing our way. This right now is where we need to do something with this. Seven minutes and 52 seconds on the clock. Tied 21-21. Alex Martinez gets the ball. Alex Martinez finds the left side for a gain of seven yards. Nice run. 
Nice run by Alex. That's what you need to get the ball. Now we're in Fountain side of the field already. And this is, of course, one of those moments where having two really strong running backs is helpful as we can slowly drive the ball down the field while still gaining decent yardage while we're also running this clock in this fourth quarter. Not a bad idea to take some time off the clock also. Arsenich takes the snap. Jaden finds a hole and oh, tripped up. What a play by number 20 First for down, no. Devin Bradford. First down, move the chains. And we all knew two five and one teams. The Titans ranked ninth, Fountain Fort Carson ranked 11th, just behind Valor at 10. We all knew this would be a good game and it's coming down to it in the final seven minutes here, folks. As the Trojans continue to jump as Marcinich hard counts them. Marcinich takes the snap. Who other than Jaden Lawrence? Rushing the ball for a gain of six. This is where you hope that as quickly as Fountain scored in the third quarter, their defense was out there a long time. Hopefully they're getting a little worn down. Our O-line starting to assert their will a little bit, gonna push. And as the time runs down, six minutes and 30 seconds remain. Both teams with all their timeouts. Marcinich takes the snap, hands the ball off to Martinez. Martinez tries to find the edge. He does, and that's a gain of 17 for the Titans, and enough for an LT first down. And again, Alex and Jaden both just have that nice little extra burst of speed they get. Once they grab that ball, they will just put the burners on right there. Alex was close to the edge. He has multiple defenders coming at him, and he just has enough speed to get around that edge and pick up the first down. Yeah, we're starting to see Fountain, their hands on their hips a little bit. They're kind of gassed right now. As we see, Marcinich takes the snap. Alex Martinez being a workhorse in, oh, number 10. With a little bit of extracurriculars. And this found Fort Carson team all night long has been chirping and pushing and talking. Five minutes and 50 seconds as the clock continues to tick. Marcinich takes the snap. Jaden Lawrence finds it outside, nice finds the back. edge. Nice the end back. zone Got in it. sight. Touchdown, LT. Great run from Jaden right there. Nice little bounce outside. That's a nice job of taking advantage of a tired defense right there. Yep. They're tired. They can't get the edge. We have several running backs we can throw their way. Three of them, actually. Riken was even out there kind of throwing some interference in his way. It's a nice job. Way to get to the edge. Twice got to the edge on a tired defense and took advantage of it. Nice to take the lead here halfway through the fourth quarter. And after that drive, they take about seven minutes off the clock as the extra point is up and the extra point is, nice. of course, good from TK. Currently watching the uh, Titans offense remind me a little bit of uh, Michigan offense. You got two beautiful running backs. Michigan out here with Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards. Titans got double Alex, tight ends. Alex Martinez. Jim Jayden Harbaugh Lawrence. written all over it. It does. I mean, and watching these boys play reminds me of them. Just beautiful little bounces, cutbacks, finding holes, running hard. You know, I know the new and Schwander's Michigan boys, but I got to give you a little OH, baby. I, oh, go, Buckeyes. Yeah. We're very, we're really You might get beat by Maryland this weekend. <laughs> we're sorry you guys have had to listen to Ryder all night, especially after that comment. <laughs> yeah. I used to like Ryder a lot. <laughs> I'm actually not a Buckeye fan. I just really, really, really dislike Michigan as many other people as well. Not that many do. people. You should see here how many Go Blues I get when I wear my Michigan stuff around. The great state of Colorado. <laughs> Brings people together. That's Carson a nice kick. That's the kick. Get. Oh! Yeah, he gave oh. us a touchback. That was close. <gasps> that, was, that was the last thing we needed right there to give him good field position. So we hey. got lucky. We got that corner. Surprised we got that call down here this south of the uh, metro area. And so far, our special teams has been fantastic. We've got 5.43 to play. We'll see if the uh, Titans defense can come out 
make some good stops. We'll see uh, what the Trojans come out and if they're going to come out in Wildcat or bring number 14 back out. And it looks like they will be going back into the Wildcat formation. They've and had success with the Wildcat. And that's kind of surprised they're not leading up the fullback a little bit more to clear it out. Because what you get with the Wildcat, you get an extra blocker and you, you basically end, make the defense play a gap short. That's Matthias Price taking the snap, Good. faking left, Anthony. and tripped up by Saez. Attaboy. The job finished by Nate Sandy. Anthony's been there all night, but it's great to see him finally get that tackle he's been looking for. Great assist from Nate as well. Right Starting there. to read that pretty well, that Wildcat. We got to give this Titans defense credit. The Trojans come out and they put up 20. One unanswered. The Titans offense does their job, scoring two touchdowns. And the Titans defense makes the adjust adjustments necessary. Well, they've actually played very well tonight. They've only given up 14 points because one of those touchdowns was the pick six. That is true. So they've actually played pretty well in, in stopping Ty's price, that right there. I mean, that cat. kid is just a load to bring down. So they've done a great job of rallying to the ball and getting him down on the ground tonight. They need to keep it up for five more minutes and that's Matthias Price and he's six foot three 220 just a little bit shorter than me and man is he something out there I bet you he can he just benches just maybe maybe a plate more than you that's it right Not even a plate just a little bit I've seen Ryder hitting 315 for reps something before. like that yeah those foam plates do me good Price takes the snap Again, going back up the middle. And it looks like, and he's dragged back. He's going to be short. And he's going to be short of the line to gain. Just about made it. That's a great Colorado job of Springs pushing. Springs refs are finally functioning a little bit normal. Oh, I'm glad he only passed the test. Really, I mean, that's Here we go. six this is inches. When they say fourth and inches, this is what they talk about. The Trojan coaches do not trust their defense to make a stop here with three minutes and 45 seconds to go. The clock ticking. Both teams with their timeouts. The Trojan face. This play, they're going to run this play to the left behind all those blockers. Yep. They're going to lead up the fullback you out there. They're going to try to get to the edge to a little bit. There. And he's, the Trojan faithful getting loud. Oh. And he's going to have enough. That's a good call. Faked me out too. They've been running. That way the whole game, and they've been saving that play for that moment. And it looked Go to the a little weak bit, side of the line, and it found a little hole. It looked a little bit like a first false start right there as half the line didn't move when the ball was snapped. You have 14 in again. 14 is back in at quarterback. That's Justin Meissner, the sophomore quarterback. And on the roster, it says he's six foot tall, but I was out there and Ben I, was coming off the edge. If he's six foot tall, then I'm seven. And oh, oh my God! Incomplete. Almost. Champ, Jones. Champ with a great almost, read on that. Oh, beautiful. Almost intercepted. Champ read that one Goodness very nicely. Me. That would have been something. That would have been a go to the house. Yeah, it's that's all right. one of those plays you dream uh, dream about when you're sitting out there waiting for someone to just throw a nice little bubble screen, run across, pick six to the house. All right, we're going to shake that one off. Next play mentality right now. Focus on this play. Justin Meissner for the first time this half in for back-to-back -back plays. The fullback, the running back. Meissner rolls out left, and he's brought down, down. number seven, Jamar Yancey. The senior defensive end with the sack. And arguably the biggest play of the game thus far for the Titans D. Yeah, so we're going to have clock still running on that play as well as making it a third and extremely long. Great play right there from Jamar. Have this clock continue to wind down in this fourth quarter. And that brings up a third and 20 here for the Trojans. Back in the Wildcat, Matthias Price. This is going to be interesting to see what they call here. Back in the game, it looks like the Titans, they have three defensive tackles. They're going to fake the handoff. And oh, oh my, almost intercepted as Champ 
almost with his second almost pick of the game. But still, nice defensive play. Somebody definitely needs to check out Champ's gloves after this game. I think they uh, might be getting a little bit old. And that's two minutes remaining. Both teams with three timeouts, fourth and 20, as the Trojans look to punt the ball as your Titans lead 28 to 21. Yeah, that botched and fake it punt they tried earlier. Really and it doesn't look like the Trojans have anybody to block as we almost block the kick. A little dud of a kick as Auckland lets the ball bounce and it takes a okay. stand still at the 39 yard line. One minute, 52 remaining as the Titans lead 28 to 21. Thus, the Trojans have three timeouts. One first down Ruben. here A couple should flags on the play. So we'll have to see uh, what ends up being the call on these. And it looked like our line got off real quick and got in the backfield. We just got to hope here as 34 limps off the field a little bit that it was not a roughing or intrusion of the kicker. I don't believe well, the kicker that's was not touched. Where, that, where that flag is thrown would have been more of an offsides or a false start or one of those illegal formations again. They're talking about it quite a while, so. And we've seen a lot of fundamental errors here from the Trojans team. Yep, they're and waving off the flag. And they're gonna wave it off, thus making it first and 10 for the Titans. The Trojans with three timeouts. Now you just gotta get a nice push from the line. Try to pick up five yards every time you're on the ball. Keep the clock going and force them to use their timeouts. And all night long the Titans have been able to run the ball. Can they run the ball when it matters? We're about to find out. Baca the lone receiver on the field. Brian Doyle lining up. Real close to the line next to No Archuleta. Juju the center. Snaps the ball. Marcinich. Martinez following his blockers. Takes five to bring him down. The Trojans going for a strip. Nice little gain of eight right there on the play. It's a great first run. As they are going to There's their first time use out. their first time out with a minute 38 remaining. Kind of surprised he even waited that long. Had lost three seconds, which when you're only down by one score, three seconds is everything. But that's okay. He can take as long as he wants to call a timeout. And we touched on it earlier, but for those at home, both these teams are five and one. Both these teams are a top 12 ranked teams. And this is a big game, not only just for confidence, but the Titans have two of their biggest games of the year coming up against Pine Creek and Regis. And I mean, this is a big game just for moral and I mean, just ego purposes going into that game. Both these teams are playoff teams this year for sure. So this game is really important for playoff positioning. Well, yeah, and like I talked about extremely early in the game, the Titans have two really tough back-to-back -to -back games coming up. So going into those games with the win is extremely helpful. Marcinich takes the snap, a first down here, wins the game. And that is going to win the game for the Titans. You well, see Mr. Garcia of Rico Burritos doing a dance on the sideline. As the Trojans wait again. They still have two timeouts though. The Trojans wait eight seconds after the play is over to call their second time out of the game as the clock stops at a minute 25 to go. And I will say, I'd like to give props to this Titans team as a whole, as before the game, there were chirps, they were talking crap, they were cursing at our players, and our players stayed dialed into their warmups. They ignored the Trojans and came out and let their play talk for them as they should as they lead the Trojans 28-21 to 21 with a minute 25 remaining as the offense steps out back on the field. Well, right, you know, right now you're just reminding your players be smart with the ball. You're going to try to tell them to protect the ball but not make them think about it too much. You don't want to overthink it. But right now it's about getting a good clean snap, good clean handoff, run the ball, try to get as many yards forward as possible. Don't try to go for anything 
Marcinich is going to hand the They're ball off. They're going to try to strip the ball. There's gets nothing. in the backfield quick. Okay, they called There's their last, last time, time out right there. Used. So the Titans need to look for one more true first down, which should be the ending to this and game. Jeff Baca and Tremaine Shaw. John a little bit here, back and forth with a minute 21 to go. Yep, so once again, just kind of reminding your players, protect the ball, good clean snap, good clean handoff. There's nothing wrong with getting tackled early here. What you don't want to try to do is fight for that extra yard. There's no point right now. That's when they're going to come in and try to strip it. That's really their best chance right now is to try to strip the ball, get a fumble, and then that's what you don't want to have happen. Here comes the offense, second down and 11. A minute 21 to go. Jaden Lawrence in the backfield with Marcinich. Michael Marcinich hands the ball off. Jaden Lawrence makes a cut up the middle. A flag on the play as the pile is stopped at the 46 yard line. It's be holding on line. us. I'm not so sure if I'm Fountain, I don't just decline it. Yeah, decline, get him a third down. Get to third down, because otherwise it's going to push us back. But it, clock will continue to run, and it will be second down still. It'll give us an extra play. We'll see what the Fountain coach decides here. Yeah, it looks like they're most likely going to decline the penalty. Yep. Yep. So that'll bring a third down for the Titans. Third down and 10. Uh, that'll be about third down and seven. We, we made some yards that time. But this is... I'm a little bit confused as to why the clock is stopped. Well, it was stopped because of the penalty, but he'll wind it here really soon. What we need to do is not rush up to the line because we'll have a full play clock right now. No need to rush this play. A minute and 17 here left on the clock. Okay, he's winding it, I think. That's, it's not a strong signal there from your wife. No, it's hat, not, he's a, uh, there we go. There's, there's, there's the windmill. Signal. Okay, it's the clock so that's what we need. Takes. So now we just need to wait. Michael needs to wait till the guy in the back gives him the, the five count. And that looks like he's going to. Good job. Good discipline right there. Let it go, tick, tick, tick. There's 10. Wait till he starts waving it. Oh, and then we jumped. False start on Baca down here. Unfortunately, that will stop the clock. The good news is we, we ran off as much time as possible there. And it comes down, like you said, Mr. New, it comes down to fundamental errors that win and lose football games. So now this becomes a third and long, and now you're gonna run into a situation where you're gonna wanna run the football here, keep the clock. Not what you're reminding your players right now in the huddle is no matter what happens, stay in bounds. Do not let them drag you to the out, out of bounds. Just get on the ground as soon as possible, trying to keep the clock running. Then I probably will let it go down and call a timeout before I punt the ball away. To what point do you just take a knee here to not risk a turnover and going out of bounds and just let that clock run? They won't get the ball back well, until Because about of the situation, seconds. I think you want to run a clock because you never know. They can miss a tackle and you can end up getting a nice gain. And then if it's fourth and two, then you might be looking at something different here. And here is Marcin. Just received some information in the chat. It is Coach Garcia's birthday. So oh. big shout out to Mr. Rico Burrito himself. There you go. Go home and put a candle in a burrito. Marcinich takes the snap. Alex, met in the backfield. Takes four to bring him down. The clock ticks under 50. As that brings up fourth down. I would probably let this thing go down. I wouldn't even call it time. I would just take the penalty to get every possible second. Give Carson a little more room to work with here on the punt. Yeah, because you're at midfield anyway. The wind has definitely died down, as predicted, Colorado weather. Sun goes down, wind stops. But 
Looks like Thielen's waiting out there. I think he is going to call a timeout. And the Trojan fans. All right, there we go. He called timeout, so he bled it down to eight seconds. Now, I would probably, if I'm doing this with eight seconds, I'm telling my punter, kick this thing as high as possible, and I would kick it out of bounds. Do not let them return this at all. Well, and if they don't send pressure, do you just tell Carson to run around a little bit until he's forced to punt the ball away? Well, there's a risk in that. You're, you're talking about high school kids, man. I'm telling you, I've been coaching a long time. You put all your hopes and dreams in 16 and 17 year old kids are gonna break your heart more often than not. So I would just try to keep it simple. He knows how to catch it and kick it. So all I would tell him is catch it and kick it as high as possible. Yep, get some good air time and, on and that. let that hang hang there. It'll hang there for a good six seconds if you kick it right. And if you kick it out of bounds, the clock's going to run out, game's over. You just don't want them to return this thing at all. 23 back there, he's hopping around. He's like, give me a chance, give me a chance. Well, and the don't Trojans give him a chance. are going to put 10 up to block this kick. Good snap. The snap is good, and the punt uh -oh. is blocked. It's blocked. The Trojans block the punt, and they pick it up, and they score. They score. Touchdown Trojans. Touchdown we got a, Trojans. We got to see now if they're going to go for two for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a game on our hands as the punt is blocked? They oh load 10 up. Goodness, what a game we have in our hands. They load 10 up at the line, and number four. 40, Myron Johnson, the sophomore linebacker, making plays when it matters. With the scoop, the block, and the score for the Trojans. Right. Uh-oh. This is a very interesting decision here. They're they're gonna, it looks like they're going to go for two. That definitely looks like they're going to go for two here in the win. And this is where... The guy who's been their guy all night. Number, number seven, Keenan Number Campbell. five is going to be in the Wildcat. And that's Matthias this Price. ball game, people. 28-27, time has expired. We call Let's timeout. That's a good timeout. Let's get our mind right. Let's talk about what we got. We've seen this guy all night. He's really, he hasn't gotten free that many times, but here's the thing. He only needs a few yards this time. We're going to need the D-line to stay nice and low, get a good push. Keep the linebackers clean. Let them push the pile back. While we're in this little break, we're going to get a quick shout-out to uh, the gents back at UCCS. we got Matthew Pearson. And you Hopefully, see here, number Grayson 40. Hardy. With the block, the scoop, and the score as time expires. Goodness. For the foul. Wild. Carson Trojans. So this is where the defense just needs to keep their head on their shoulders, stay composed, and it, it's, it's on them now to finish this game out. We've talked about big plays of the game with Jamar Yancey with a snack, sack, but no bigger play than this as Matthias Price steps up. The Titan fans getting on their feet. The Trojan fans getting on their feet. Everybody who was leaving before is back as time has expired. 28-27, Matthias Price takes the snap. Matthias Price runs right side. Uh-oh, they blew it dead. They blew it dead. We call timeout again. Timeout legend, as it looked like mm. the legend defense had corralled Matthias Price on that play. Yeah, we, boy, I hope we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot there. I think, I think that would have been a game ender right Thielen there. And wants a flag. Thielen wants a false start. Boy, now you're giving them... A free timeout. They could draw something up. Seeing the formation we came out in, does vote keep it the same or does vote change it? The entire Trojan sideline linked arms, hoping that their prayer of a blocked punt works in their favor. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of football in my life. I don't know if I've ever seen a blocked punt tie a game at the end. Now they're going. And here's Matthias they, they got, Rice. 14 is in. Jackson Hayden Burke, they the fullback. They got pullback. options now. And Meissner takes the snap, drops back to pass, throws over the middle, and it's complete! Oh, oh, there's, there's a flag, there's a flag there's on the play. Call, there's a flag on the play. 
pass interference against the Titans. That's going to give us half the distance to the goal. As the Titan fans, you can hear their boos roar all the way across the field. This is the game that just won't end. And man, for not having a lot of fans, can you hear their roar of a boo? As every single person in the stadium on their feet. So that's gonna go from... As Meissner is no longer on the field. Yeah, now, now they're set up for just a push here from number five. They have 11 on the field. Matthias Price taking the snap. Jaden Hockenberg to his left. Matthias Price takes the snap, goes over the middle, and he's held, he's held! Into the end zone! The two point conversion is good! The and the Trojans, Trojans win, the Trojans win. win! This battle of a football game. That was one of the craziest games I've ever seen. The Trojans win and storm back after being down at halftime. Their defense and special teams making plays. The cannon going off. The Trojans win. The Trojans win. What a game we just watched. And I have to say, I really have to say, that was a bold holding call as the Titans had held them. But. The Trojans deem on top and get redemption on the Titans from last year's gut-wrenching victory against them. That's going to be a long drive back to Parker for the Titans. That's, a long that's a tough drive one. back. That's they a, got two tough games on their schedule coming up. That, this is a tough one to stomach. That is. So that's, that's unfortunate because we have two extremely tough games coming up in the schedule. So we'll have to see uh, how the Titans respond next week. And a gut-wrenching loss here for Titan fans. A gut-wrenching loss. As the Legend fans here are speechless. Speechless are the Legend fans. Speechless are the announcers. <laughs> Speechless are the fans. There's, there's just not a lot to say. Hey, I'm exhausted and say. I didn't play. And Coach Thielen clenching his fists. I, I, I thought I saw Thielen snap a headset. Stomping the ground. There was uh, something broken in his hands as he And shook the Trojans hands ultimately coaches. led by Keenan Campbell and Matthias Price, as well as a pick six from their defense. Storm back and win this game on a blocked scoop and score touchdown with eight seconds remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us here in Fountain as the Trojans win 29, your Titans 28. We will see you next week as the Titans take on Pine Creek back at Echo Park at 7 p.m. on Friday night. We thank you for joining us. Be safe. Have a great night, Titans.